Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's so glad to be with you today. And um, this is from the Christmas Speak Talk Radio. Today's broadcast is the Bread of Life. Amen. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the unlovable. Uh, Jesus loved the unlovable. Jesus loved the rejected and the outcast. Okay. I uh, just want to let you know the song is playing in the background. It's a song that I wrote or composed uh, with a young lady from the Philippines, her name is Josie um, Aliangan, amen, and uh, so she put everything <laughs> to music, so that's what you hear in the banker called Stand Still, amen, amen, amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I just want to uh, welcome you again um, to the broadcast, and I pray that it be a blessing to you, and for those that are left, listening um, in different places, I pray that it uh Give you what you need. I thought I like uh, was thinking about earlier during the day uh, what I was going to teach on or, or what I was going to put in a tape or whatever. And um, I decided to talk about, uh, I heard a lot of good words. I listened to a lot of different preaching that took place by Brothers Church and Pastor James Robson Church. And, and, I, and, and in the midst of listening, this is what I heard. I want to talk about how Jesus loves us. He loved the unlovable, the rejected, and the outcast. Okay, uh, and that covers a lot of ground. You know, that covers a lot of people. Amen. And everything. So we're gonna give you some scriptures and and gonna have a good time with this and see what God takes us. I'm not sure how long they're gonna be or whether I'll be able to finish or not. But when I'm trying to get it done today, all of it done within an hour. And amen. So I won't take up too much of your time. Amen. So, But I do want to remind you of our different broadcasts. Amen. Uh, we have uh, History of Bond and Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. It's at Tuesday at 7 p.m. That's subject to change in a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll probably change to the first and the second Tuesday at 7 p.m. Challenge of Change with Pastor Paul Morgan. It's the first and the second Wednesday at 7 p.m. Declare and finish work with Pastor Pat Randall is the first and the second Thursday at 12 noon. On Friday Night Joy, right now, it's the first, the second, and the fourth Friday. Amen. At 7 p.m., the Bread of Life is the first and the third Sunday. Amen. And just use it with me. Amen. At 7 p.m., our weekly uh, prayer is called Midday Glory Prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon. It's at 1 p.m. That's a conference free call. The dialing number is 267-807-9605. Access code is 732-499. You also can listen later at 267-807-9608. Again, access code is 732-499. You can find all these broadcasts, uh, all of them, even though I'm about to pronounce for the monthly broadcast, you can find all of them on um, iHeartRadio, iTunes, uh, Spreaker.com, Blog Talk Radio, uh, uh, Spotify. They're all there. All the broadcasts are there. So we have different platforms that you can listen any kind of way that you want, okay? So check us out and send us a message that you listen. All right? Our monthly broadcast is coming up soon, like Blind with Apostle Shirley Jones. This Monday, next Monday, rather, uh, the first Monday, she will be having uh, – Guest speaker Vanessa, Minister Vanessa Williams, come, amen. And they are, they will be talking about a book discussion that they have out and whatever the Holy Spirit leaves in the heart, amen. So that's uh, the first Monday of the, in in October at 7 p.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday at 7 p.m. Um, Evangelist Lewis McElwain does a lot of different. Uh, on platforms also, on social media, on Facebook. Check out Adoration. Amen. I mean, I believe he had a service even today on Sunday sometimes, okay? Switching Nuggets of Truth with Minister Carmen Booker is every the second and the fourth Monday at 8 p.m. Um, Matters of the Heart, there's a group of singles, all, including myself, that get together every third Friday and we talk about everything. We don't try to table anything, you know, we pull the scale off and discuss being single and 
uh, all of that. You know, we don't judge. Everybody has a different opinion about six of us, and I'm excited about being part of that group. The Boat in the Beautiful is every second Saturday at 10 a.m., amen. And, again, it's a group of young people um, and everything, and they bring some some get more to young younger people, people much younger than me and everything. And they have other people come on like rappers and they have people come on and talk about business and different aspects. I'm excited about them also. Hour three, real life, real men, real talk. And then it's a bunch of brothers, about five brothers. We all come on together, man, and we just talk about men, men stuff. We talk about uh, relationships. We talk about how men should love a woman. How, I mean, we talk about everything. We've been doing this now. Most of these broadcasts we're doing are not new. Uh, we've been doing it now for a while, like over a year. And um, to check us out to our three real life, real men, real talk. And then um, that's at 7 p.m. Right. Marriage Takeover with Pastor Eric and Pastor Tamika Thompson every fourth Sunday. Man, at 7 p.m., they also do a lot of different things on, on Zoom and on Facebook and social media and YouTube. Uh, so check out Marriage Take, Takeover. you like to get in contact with it, oh, yeah, just go to Facebook and type on Marriage Takeover, and it'll take you directly to their page. Don't forget to like us on Facebook on When Christmas Beat Talk Radio. Check us out on our website, whenchristmasbeat.com. We have a little bit more information out there for you about the different hosts and a, a lot of the older broadcasts is also located on there, along with the different platforms that we do. Amen. You can also, by any means, if you have a desire to sow a seed or donation into the ministry, we are listed as a Bible 1C3. Amen. So you can definitely do that uh, for the purpose of uh, spreading the ministry. Nobody's trying to get rich. Nobody's trying to do anything. We're just trying to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the mandate that he's given to when Christians be talk radio. Amen. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Father God, I thank you for today, for truly this is the day that you have made. God, we, we are are so glad to be in the land of the living, so glad to be able to speak the oracles and the mysteries of you, God. We give this broadcast to you and say, come, Holy Spirit, and have your way. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way. You do what is needed, God. You shift. Bring forth a shift, a paradigm shift in the world, in the, in the system, God. The people might, men and women might repent and follow after you, the things to you. You do, God, to bring us back into a right relationship with you. God, be faithful for Forgiveness of sins, anything that we said or did, or did God, that was contrary to your will, we throw our, ourselves at the mercy seat of you, Lord Jesus, and say, here, here we are, Father. Forgive us. So we pray today that you will send forth your blessings, Lord Jesus. Send forth your angels of mercy. Send forth your, the desire that we should live and not die. We will forever give you all the praise and the glory. Amen and amen. And amen. Again, I'm blessed, glad to be here with you um, um, bread on the Bread of Life segment. That we're going to talk about Jesus loves the untouchable, the unlovable, the, re- the reject, and the outcuts, outcasts. Amen. And basically, I, I have several scriptures from you and everything. And when I was putting this together, I thought about the, uh, they've been talking about this, um, a lot of uh, the, the borders, uh uh, patrol and people coming in from all different countries and they coming in illegal and all this kind of thing and I mean everybody has an opinion on it and I'm not going to tell you you know to really get into a lot of discussion with that about what the opinion is but I know I remind you of the Statue of Liberty and one of the, the things that it says on the Statue of Liberty and I believe that this country was made because all, most the majority of this country is a, is a country of immigrants. They came from somewhere unless you were born um, as a native you know, um, in the land and everything. Then um, all of us came from somewhere else. And this is what they says, the Statue of Liberty. It says, it says, give me your tired, your poor, your, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse to your teeming shores. Send these, the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. This country, great, greatest and true genius lives in its diversity. In other words, it's talking about uh, diversity that uh, that we were established and uh, we uh, open up our arms to everyone. Else. And, and in my case, we didn't really want to come here. Most of my African brothers <laughs> didn't come here by choice. Let's be for real, okay? We were taken as slaves or whatever. But for those that wanted to come here and everything, their arms was open 
And um, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm talking about that because when I think about these are the, the what's going on right now that the is that the United States and and some and I'm I, look they need a they need a better um, border control laws or whatever they need to be done, but it need to be. Um, human conscience, okay, and that's just my thing, okay. All right, that's need to be here. We we need those certain things in place. Not trying to get it political, but there are certain things that need to be in place, okay. All right. I don't believe in putting kids in cages and separating them from the family. I'm telling you right now, I don't believe in none of that. Okay, I don't think that's the, what Christ would do. Amen. And we would have reference in Christ need to be able to do those things that Christ would do. He just never turned anyone away. Okay, and everything. So with that being said, when I read the, the what it says about giving your tithe and, and your poor, it, it ties into the scripture some of the things that Jesus offered in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 and 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 30, you know, that Jesus uh, loved those that was unlovable. When you look at them, or those that were rejected, or those that were considered to be outcast. And here in, 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 the, in the, what's written on the Statue of Liberty, they say, give me these people that you don't want, that the world system don't want. Give them, let them come, let them come here. And we we're gonna we're gonna do what's right by them. That's what it says, you know. But that's man's way of looking at it. And if they, and maybe that when it was written uh, and engraved on it, that they it, they had the, the Christianity Christianity in mind on how it should operate and how it should perceive or what should take place. Because it was like welcoming mom. Now the arms seem to be closing up, closing um, uh, on their on. Um, Fold it up to a point where they only allow certain types of people in. I'm just saying, that's all it is. But I'm not here to talk about that today. I'm not here to criticize this country and what's going on. I love this country. I was born here. You know, when people tell me, say to, say to us to go back to Africa, I'm not ancestors, me, but I was born here, like in the United States, just like you were. Okay, but here. Again, give me give me your time, your poor, your hundred masses yearning to breathe free. They have a desire to be breathe breathe free. The wretched refuse to your team ashore. Send these the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. This country greatness and true genius lie lies in its diversity. Diversity. This country is built on diversity. It, it was built. On the on the on, on diversity of, of different slaves and everything, it was built. Let's be for real. We got to call the spade the spade. It was, it was it was there was parts of it that was stolen from the nature that was uh, negotiated in, in in theft mode and stuff like that. But with all of that being said and everything, I I think I love about Jesus. That again, he loved the unlovable, he loved the rejected, and he loves the outcast. In Matthew 11 and 28 and verse 30, it says, Come unto me, all that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's like the thing that I like about that particular scripture, he's just not discriminating. He didn't say that whether you was a Jew or whether you was a Greek or whether you was uh, black or whether you was white or whether you was Asian or uh, any of those things. He said, come and take me all ye that labor. If you're going through some laboring, if you're going through some, some child, some tribulation, tribul- tribul- um, I'm, my lips are messing up on me today, some trials and some tribulations, understand that Jesus is Christ is there for you today. That he promised, again, like I always say, never to leave you and, and never forsake you. Amen. I want to read, I'm going to skip around a little bit, but I want to talk about the unlovable. I came up with the scriptures that's coming out of First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, and it talks about Jabez. And, and it said, in verse 9, it said, Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on God of Israel and saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, enlarge, enlarge my coast, that thy hand might be with me, and thou would keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that with 
he, that which he requested. Jabez's mother named his Jabez, his mother named him Jabez, saying to you that I, that you bear him of sorrow. I don't know what was going on with the mother. I don't know what kind of trial or tribulation that she would do. I don't know what she was really, really but that come when I hear her that. There was two scriptures right there. There was two scriptures right there, verse 10, 9, and 10. I'm not sure there was one of, of lovable. You know, I could see Jabez probably felt unloved, you know. But even though he may have felt unloved because he was, uh, he bare him, she bare him with sorrow. James, the Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And Jabez knew how to call on the Lord. He knew who God was. So he began to do the one thing, y'all, that we can do even today. We can call on Jesus. We can say, oh, that thou, he said, and Jabez called on God of Israel, said that, oh, that thou was blessed me indeed. You know, I can see Jabez beginning to pour out himself into God. You know, they hear a name like Jabez. No doubt there were times that I believe that I wasn't there, but I believe that he might have been teased and ridiculed about his name. Um, the one of sorrow, and he said, "But thou wilt bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, that thine hand might be with me, and thou would keep me from enemy, from evil, that it may not grieve me." And God granted that which He requested. God granted that when He requested. God granted that I the Lord you would enlarge my coast. In other words, you would give me more influence right now, I have right now, because people look at me, they see sorrow. One born of sorrow, but if you would take me and use me and and, and everything, and if you would keep me from any kind of evil and stuff like that, that was his request and everything. And the same God that was that honored Jabez and granted his request will honor us also, because some of us have been named for various reasons, and our names have particular meanings. And maybe there was named. You may not have been named Jabez, but you may have been named, named something that means sorrowful or hurtful or whatever. There's somebody that might have been calling you out of your name as a nickname that was meant to reject you and everything, or to show you that you were unlovable. But I'm here today to tell you that you are lovable to Jesus Christ. The, God, for, the scripture said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God love you. You are lovable. Another scripture I have is coming out of Matthew chapter 9, verses uh, 9, verses chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. It says, and as Jesus passed forth from this, he saw a, name, a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, "Follow me." And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus said, at the meet in the house, and behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, "Why eat you your master with publicans and sinners?" But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, uh, "Said unto him, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick." But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I, for I am come, I am not come to call the righteous, but center, um, sinners to repentance. Again, those that were uh, unlovable, that they, because they were considered Jews, considered to be unclean, or they were sinners. They was publicans. They 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 didn't see things. They um, and, uh, Matthew uh, had a job that many of the Jews like Levi. Um, uh, frown upon and everything, whether it was tax collectors and stuff like that. They, were, in many cases, thought that he uh, was uh, uh, betrayed the people, not myth, but they betrayed the people. So, in all of these things, you know, we have to um, look, understand that we are lovable, no matter what our, our, our task might have been, our job might have been, no matter what we do to bring, God has opened his arm. I mean, he did those, uh, this also to those that was prostituting uh, Mary, and, and he offered, Mary Magdalene, he offered her to be, Jesus offered her to be with him and everything, which, you know, and stuff like that. So, so all of that comes into play to understand that the lovable, those that are considered to be the unlovable, uh, those that are considered to be the rejected, or the outcasts, amen, or the outcasts. I want to read one 
um, my songs. I'm skipping before I go to the next one. It says Psalms 37, verses 23 and 27. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he he fall, he should not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholding him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging the bread. He is ever merciful and, and, and lenders, and his seed is blessed. The prophet even do good and dwell forevermore. Dwell forevermore. Amen. Again, the unlovable, the rejected, and the... Um, um, the outcast. And the other scripture that I'm looking at as I'm beginning to speak, I want to go to the rejecter. Again, I'm not going to be with you long. I'm going to be with you short. Amen. But when I think about the the, the, the rejecter, I'm coming out of the scripture, John chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. This is the King James Version. And it says, Now Jacob's well was there, as Jesus therefore being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour, there come a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me to drink. For his disciples was going away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria to him, how is it that thou being a Jew askest drinkage of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered, said to her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink. That would have asked of him, and he would have given thee the living water. Amen. He would have given them the Jews, again, have no um, dealing with the Samaritans. For some things that have happened way back in the, the, the Samaritans uh, worship God, not in Jerusalem, but they worship God in the mountains and everything. So the Jews and everything had outcast them or or rejected them as a people. Now, I want to read a little bit more of this right here. I mean, just bear with me for a second. I want to turn to, turn to what's in my, my Bible. Amen. Amen. Give me one second. Amen. Because this is, is important that we uh, talk about these things. Amen. It's important that we, we dialogue, dialogue, uh, dialogue about these things. Amen. 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 Okay, amen. 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 Give me a second here. I just want to make sure I get to the right scripture. I just had it. God is good and he is faithful and he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. And then he's worthy to the, okay, coming on to John chapter 4. Verse 6. Let me just see if I can get there real quick. Okay, John chapter 4. Because I want to read some more of this. I want to start back at verse 10, okay? It says, this is John chapter 4, verse 10. It says, Jesus answered, If thou knewest the gift of God, who would have said to thee, Give me the drink that thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee the living water. And it says, The woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. For whence then hast thou that living water? And thou and thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof of himself and his children and his cattle. So they were of the of the seed of Jacob. Okay, and Jesus said to him, Whosoever drank of this water, told him, shall thirst again. But whosoever drank of the water that I shall give, shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. And Jesus said, Go and call go to, go to the go and call the husband, come to come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said, There is well said for I have no husband, for thou hast have had five husbands, and he that with thou hit with now is not thy husband. What you said is true, amen. So it goes on, and, <laughs> and it goes on to begin in verse 20, talks about, and it says, the woman said, unto sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this manner, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where a man ought to watch worship. Man. I'm going to read this one more verse. And it says, it says, Jesus said unto him, Woman, believe me, that I will come, but ye shall neither, wor- neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship your father. Ye worship ye, know what, know not what. We now, we now, we know what we should worship for salvation is of the Jews. Let me read that again. Ye worship ye, Know not what, 
we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour will come, and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. They must worship him in spirit and in truth, man, I'm telling you. So the, the, um, the, the those that are unlovable, those that are rejected, those that are outcast, God is calling all of us forward to come into him, you know, and he will give us the rest. I mean, he will give us the rest, man. I want to read another scripture. This is coming out of um, Luke chapter 19, verses 10, and it's talking about the curious. It says, uh, it says, and Jesus entered and passed the Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of little stature, amen. And he ran before and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Understand that Zacharias, I consider Zacharias to be rejected because he tried to get into the, the crowd. I can imagine this man of so small status trying to see Jesus, and, and he was no doubt there was a huge crowd there that he couldn't get past. Okay, so so he decided to climb into the sycamore tree just to see him. But he was he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. See, God doesn't care about your stature. He don't care how tall you are. He don't. He doesn't look at your your weight and all this kind of stuff. He don't look at your color, your skin. But he loved the unlovable, the rejected, and the outcast. It says, and if he, when he when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Here we go again. Other people putting them, um, these people in categories of sinners or publicans or whatever. And we sometimes in the church have to be very careful about what comes out of our mouth because we don't know what God is about to do with somebody that's considered to be human, considered to be an outcast. The many of us was outcasts. Many of us has been turned us away from society. Many of us may have been homeless at one time. Many of us may have been have on drugs or, or may have been uh, may have prostituted our body. Many of us may have, have came from um, abusive families and abusive homes. And many of us may have served time in jail. And many of us did some things that don't know what else know about except for you and God. <laughs> it's a testimony to be for real and true and stuff like that. So they would be, and, and if the people find out about it and you are in the body, they will persecute you and you will continue to be an outcast. You will be, continue to be unlovable. You will continue to be rejected. They will reject you because of your past. But God, like Jesus Christ loves those that are unlovable. He loves those that are rejected. He loves those that are outcasts. He stretches his arm wide open for them. And it says, and when, verse 8 says, and, and the, verse 7, back, back to 7, it says, and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacharias stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him forth forth. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation is coming to this house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the son of man, again, y'all, it comes to seek and to save that which was lost. To come to seek and save that which is lost. Amen. I want to go back and read another scripture for you before I go on to the last one. I'm telling you, we're almost done, okay? This is coming out of Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. <laughs> persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. We're not. You know, God knows, if God that we serve knows the number of hair that's on us, you know, he knows how the lily is told. He even makes it so that the birds are, the birds are fed on a daily basis. He knows everything else about, about us. He knows everything about him. Uh, now I want to look, read the outcast, and I promise I'm going to be before you long. We're almost done, okay? All right. 
Amen. And then outcast. And there was a woman that had an issue of love twelve years, which spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. And verse forty four says, came came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood was stanched. And Jesus said, said, Who touched me? And and, and by the way, I believe they said that she said, If I can only touch the hem of his garment, I believe that I will be whole. And Jesus brought the five began and and Jesus said, Who touched me? And when all denied, Peter and they that were with him saying, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, saying thou who touched me? They thought it was confusing. Look, we've been thrown and pushed, and everybody's trying to get to you. You say, who touched me? <laughs> you know, and Jesus, says, and Jesus said, somebody has touched me. Touch me, for I perceive that virtue is going out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. And she declared unto him before all the people for what Cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. This woman had an issue of blood, and when there was an issue of blood, just like a woman that's on a cycle of ministering or whatever, they're supposed to separate. They're considered to be unclean and everything. They're considered to be unclean. And I'm thinking, I like about it. This woman that had an issue of blood, I mean, they said that. Uh, um, she had an issue of blood and for 12 years and spent all her living on physicians and neither could be here of any. Nobody could help her. But she believed if, that if she touched the hem of Jesus Christ, that she would be whole. That's why I said that, that, that she was considered to be an outcast. She was like those that have leprosy, and that they were considered to be outcasts. They were considered to be unclean. They, whenever they came around people, they had, to, they had to pronounce that they were unclean so people won't bump into them accidentally and then everything like that. Here, this woman, all she cared about was getting here, the outcast. The outcast also to be us, y'all, outcasts. You know, we 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 wouldn't be able to re- know about Jesus Christ except that we receive them, and then we become heirs and joint heirs, and we become born again believers. We become um, brothers in Christ. You know, we become um, <laughs> we become friends to Him. And so, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, outcast. We, 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 without the cross, and without the resurrection, you know, without the the birth, the death. In the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that there was no hope for man. The, the, the blood of, of goats and bullocks and, and sheep wasn't enough. They was only good for a year. And then you go back there and do the same thing. Honey. That's why the, the, the statute of the laws does not work. Okay? It doesn't work. You know, but it's through the grace and the mercy of our Almighty God that if those things work. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ that we have been redeemed. It's going to let the redeem of the Lord do what? Say so. We have been redeemed. We have been redeemed. We have been born again, not of the of the flesh, but of the spirit. You know, we have been born again. We were washed through and through. Amen. With with the blood of Jesus Christ, with the Lamb of God. We have been washed through and through in everything. So we're no longer just unlovable. We're no longer the, re- the rejected. We're no longer the outcast. But we're the apple of his eye. See what I'm saying? We're the apple of his eye. We're the head and not the tail. You see, we're the head and not the tail. We are his peculiar treasure. That's who we are. He called us friends. Jesus called us friends. You know, we are, like I said before, we are heirs and, and joint heirs. Amen. I want to read one more scripture. And this is the last one. I promise um, we're going to get out of here. Okay. This is coming out of Luke chapter 17, verses 11, 13, 11 and 19. And again, this is talking about the leper. This one is talking about the leper. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria, going through Samaria again, y'all. Again, the Jews in heaven dealing with Samaria, but he went through Samaria, Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered to a certain village, they met him. Ten men that were lepers were stood afar off. Remember, they had they were lepers. They were considered to be unclean. They had to stand afar off. Okay, and it said, and they lifted up their voice and, and and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They knew who Jesus was. Okay, no doubt they had heard about the miracles and the things that he had done already. So they stood afar off because there was other people with Jesus. Okay, that was the the, the right thing. That was the law that they had to do. They because they were considered to be unclean and everything like that. They were get in a lot of trouble if they had came even closer. Amen. And it says, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto him, Go show yourself 
sacrifice unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were clean. Where were they going? There was a man that there was a law that they had to, some of them had leprosy, had to go and show themselves unto the priest. And from that, the priest even gave them instructions. If they were clean, they were okay to live among it. If they were not, then they had to continue to be separated or they had to be continue to be, um, um, re, they were considered to be rejected and everything from everybody else. Okay? He said, go you serve yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass as they, as they went. They were clean as they went. And they began to go to the priest. And so can you imagine that their skin began to um, cleanse up, began to get clear again, and look better than what it ever did ever before one of them? And, and, it said, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And one, just one out of the ten, only one turned back. You know, and when he saw that he was here, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face and his feet and gave, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He was one that was rejected of the Jews and stuff like that. They didn't consider him to be of God's people and stuff. They were rejected because they worshiped in the mountains and not in Jerusalem. They, they rejected him. Just like the Samaritan woman. They were, they were rejected. And said, fell down his face and his feet, and give him thanks. He was he, he was Samaritan, okay. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? They are not. They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said to him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. He said, Where's the nine? They, the, the problem the same thing took place with them. You know, they begin to get him, but why did they stop and come back and th- give God thanks and everything like that? You know, were well, they still caught them going to the priest to show themselves, hey, I can live among my family and everything like that? Why did they come back and give God thanks? You know, the one that came back, he got the better of the blessing because he came back and gave honor to where honor was due. The the uh, unlovable, the rejected, and the outcast. God, my friend, today I'm done. I got it all done. God loves you, okay? God loves you. No matter where you are, no matter what your testimony, what you may be facing, you might be at your wit's end trying to figure things out. You might be ready to just throw in the tire, the tire and everything like that. You might feel like that you are outcast. You might feel like that you've been rejected, not just in your family, but on your job and the Community. You might feel like that the people of the world system have just completely given up on you. But today, today I want to offer you Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Today, I want to offer you to him. I want him to come into your life. You might be one that has backs that you know the way. And so you might have one, maybe one that, uh, that slipped up a little bit, did something you know it was wrong, but you did it and thing because of your own lust or desire. It's okay. You know, the price of the cross is for you too. The price of the cross, the blood that was shed on the cross, is for all of us. You're not in this all by yourself. You're not. You, you know, you're not in this all by yourself. So God is saying to you today, I love you. Jesus is saying to you, I love you. I love you. You are not alone. You are not isolated. No matter what the enemy whispers into your ear, you got to believe that you're not alone and that God loves you. Amen. You got to believe that God loves you. Amen. That he loves you. So this is what I want you to do for me today. Okay. I want you today to look within yourself and to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay. That he is the son of the living God. That he died on Calvary Cross for you. I don't care who you are, where you are, what country, you know, and everything. Hopefully you can understand what I'm saying and everything. But Jesus Christ died for you. And now I want you to give your heart and your mind over to him and receive him as your Lord and Savior today. Now, listen, there could be days that the retiring times are coming here that you feel like you mess up and can't get it right. But I want you to do that. And then I want you to find a Bible-believing, loving, discipleship church that will teach you, and that will disciple you in love, not in judgment, not kind of outcast you, uh, not showing that you are rejected, but that will bring you into the relationship, a deeper relationship with Christ through the word of, of God. Make sure you get yourself that type of church and get yourself the word of God, the Bible, okay? And begin to read and to study that word in season and out of season. 
begin to ask the, 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 the Holy Spirit because we're going to ask God to give you the Holy Spirit too, all right? That will bring all things back to your remember. The Holy Spirit is it's a gift for those that ask for it. You have to ask for it. Ask God to give you that too, to give you the complete package. Package. Because to be saved means to be converted. That means you stopped in your tracks and turned completely around. Then you need to go further and ask us for the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Okay? Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Once you believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and everything, now you're on a path to get to know who Jesus is, a path of learning his ways. Because God has never rejected anyone. Okay? Even those that deny him, Jesus said, Lord, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even the ones that was on the cross, one said, if that be the Christ, <laughs> save me, save you, save yourself, and save me too. But the other one says, <laughs> Lord, remember me when they get, you get to your, paradise, your kingdom. He said, this day, you'll be with me in paradise. The lovable, the rejected, the outcast. God is here for you. Okay? The, the, the heavy burden, the sad, the, the depressed, the suicidal. It's a, I give you Jesus, the Son of the living God today. That He would come into your life and break in, down every idol and cast out every foe. That he will begin to come into your life and break down the barriers of that's in your life that's been holding you back, whatever they might be. That he would begin to take away those things, uh, the, 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 whether it be conscious or unconscious, things that you do that are not pleasing to God, that you might receive the salvation of Jesus Christ into your life. Okay? All of us been there. All of us, anybody that have their, their thought and, and, and salvation has been there. We've had some good days and we have some um, bad days. We had some cloud, cloudy days and some hills to climb. But God <laughs> has brought us through all of those things. And if he did it for us, he'll do it for you because he has no respect of person. He has no respect of person. He's not looking at your background. He's not looking at uh, how many people, women or men that you slept with. He's not looking at that. He's not looking you know, that you might have did some things. He, he, he said his arms are wide open for you. His arms are wide open. I'm going to read this one scripture, and then we're going to go ahead and get out of here in prayer. I want to go back to read the scripture. It's coming out of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are he- are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burdens is light. Amen. So I pray today that this message has been a blessing for someone, like it's been a blessing to me. Allow us, Lord Jesus, to repent quickly of things that we do that I know that's not pleasing to you. Allow us to go to the altar, God, and lay prostrate before your presence. That we, Lord Jesus, might be that which you have called us to be in this day and time. That we might be the salt, light, and power, Lord Jesus. We realize that we can't do this journey without you. So come, Holy Spirit, come with all your might and your glory. You set forth the heavens. There are many of us that are going, going through loss. God, loss of loved ones, whether it be COVID, whether it be cancer, whatever the case might be. We're praying for your ministering angels to come forth now and begin to minister to them, God. We pray today, Lord Jesus, that you would do something wonderful in our lives, God. We pray for families, God, and, and mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and grandmothers and aunties, God. We pray for families, Lord Jesus, that there may be a return back into you, Lord Jesus, today. We pray for the, not just the United States, but we pray for the nations, God, that those that know Jesus, that know your voice, they will cry loud and spare not and lift up their voice like a trumpet unto you and declare the wondrous works of the Lord. And they will declare with the warnings, God, and trumpet blowings, Lord Jesus, that you are soon to come, Lord Jesus. We pray for nations that will, that will begin to seek after the things of you 
and not after the things of man or of law or, or whatever, but the things of you, the things that pleases you. We pray for, for a great revival to take place within all the land, Lord Jesus, for many to come and lay prostrate before you and give their heart to you, Lord Jesus, not to be seen or not to show anything like that, but, but a genuine love that for you, Christ, to do the things of you that you have designed. We pray today, God, for every apostle, every bishop, every pastor, every preacher, God, every reverend, Lord Jesus, every um, uh, evangelist, God, every minister, God, every musician, the Levites, God, all that you have called, Lord Jesus, for such a task, God, that we, Lord Jesus, may submit our ways unto you and return. We pray for those that are, all of us are Levites, God. You call all of us to preach the gospel, Lord Jesus. All of us. Some preach in the pulpit, but many preach in the street. Many do one-on-one, the spreading the good news of the Jesus Christ, God. So we pray that you will give us, make us bold, that we will serve you, Lord Jesus. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Listen, y'all, I pray and hope that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. Please share on different social social media. Amen. I believe this, I believe, not believe, I know this was a word not only for you, but also for me. That God loves, Jesus loved the unlovable, the rejected, the outcast, the downtrodden, those that are beat down, um, but you're not destroyed. <laughs> he loves you, whoever and wherever we are. I don't care what's your nationality. I don't care what, how much money you got in the bank. I don't care about your education or lack of ed- education. You know, you might be on eating your last meal for the night, uh, for the week and stuff like that because uh, you ran out of money. But I'm praying for God miraculously to do something in, to your life, to show himself unto you today, this day, this hour. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you.